The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Um, I think the first thing we'd like to do is to basically just go around and if you can just let us know a little bit about the approaches, the strategies that you're using in your own nation to build your church so that we can learn from your experience as well. So I'll start from Evangelist Kwame. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Good afternoon, everyone. So, first of all, I have come to know that the Holy Spirit doesn't give us a feeling. The Holy Spirit gives us a knowing. And today we know that the knowing is that God wants to take the cities. Amen. And so he has given this vision to our chairman and the chairman has passed it on. And so when we pray, he shows us the ways to go. Now, every city is different, like you have pointed out. So what is important to do, or what we have done, is to have a correct spiritual and physical mapping of the city that you find yourself in. There must be a physical and a spiritual mapping. The physical mapping is, of course, to know your road, your streets, the things that are in the city, the institutions that are found there in the city. You know that God is not only interested in the people, but he's interested in the institutions that you find yourselves in, and that is what we also saw. And basically the spiritual mapping is where you get to know the places that Satan is taking. He, we don't believe that he has taken. He is taking and, and we um, then respond aggressively through the SWOT analysis that we prepare. The strength, the weaknesses, the opportunities, the threats of the city we find ourselves in. Now once all these spiritual mappings are done, that we are able to come up with the right strategies as to where we are to go. In Luxembourg, we realize it is a country that has only 600,000 people. And in the weekends, you are not even going to find 300,000 people in the city. So what are you going to do? And out of the 10 people you minister to, only one person lives in Luxembourg. The rest are all cross-border people, which actually is a ministry that must come up cross-border ministry now we must follow them up and follow this one person and know what they are interested in and what they want to see happening amen now do i still have time all right so the other thing that we also try to know is to be, we are very much aware of our, ind our identity. We believe that we we are more than uh, we. There is something more than our identity in Christ. We have an identity who is Christ, and then Christ is interested in everybody. That is Christ. So then we have the mind of Christ, and then we know that Christ is interested in every body because of this identity that we have and then he shows the way we get the people by the grace of god and then discipleship must start now our approach this is how we understand and when we say discipleship how we understand it and based on the teachings that we hear from the chairman and our fathers we jesus says we should make disciples so 
we see that disciples are never there they are to be made to make is to produce to make is to manufacture to make is to fabricate and so disciples are not there we must make them when we got to Luxembourg, we were told that we were never going to even find 10 people coming to church based on the demographics. So we took upon the challenge upon ourselves and we prayed. And then we decided that by the grace of God and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we are going to make the disciples. So we began the journey to find them in. We adopted the street church concept we go out and then when we go out we are not so much interested in sharing flyers but really engaging the people and understanding i'm very excited to hear our sister who just spoke about the new age movement which i think the church in europe must find the solutions and must be ready because the kundalini thing is really working in people we have, had such, we have had such experiences in Luxembourg and by the grace of God, they've also given their life to Christ and they are thriving in the Lord. Amen. So when we engage them, the flyer is not the thing that we are really concerned about, but really to engage, understand them and then find the responses and work on the mindset of the people. Unfortunately, the contest we see, we find ourselves in, the people have really different you know, when they hear about church, they see the church as a place where there is a cult, it's a group of people trying to follow rules and regulation. We are addressing it that church Christianity is not a religion, it is a relationship. And um, church, they think that church is a place, sin and all that, sinners are not welcome. We say Jesus Christ did not come to die and to take away our sins. Well, he took away the sins, but there was something bigger he did. He drew, he brought us back to a loving father. We continue like that. Now, if the people are not willing and ready to go to church, then the church must go to the people. So we try to take the church to the people, wherever they are, how they are, and we, we, we then ensure that they, um, they get it that church is really the best place to be and Jesus is the best man that you can ever allow to come to your life. Amen. Amen. I think when time permits, we'll be able to come with some of the things that we have. Amen. Thank you so much, Evangelist. We'll move on to Evangelist Elvis as well, please. Praise the Lord. Uh, once again, thank you for the opportunity um, to be here. Um, reflecting on what has been said or the question at hand, uh, one of the first things that we also looked at was having an understanding of, of the context. Um, because every context is so, so, so important. Um, when I first went to Cyprus, one of the things we were tasked to do by the missions office was to produce an ethnographic research. That was a hard task to do, because I'd never done one before. Um, but that was so, so helpful. And through that, we got to really understand the spiritual history of the land. Um, Cyprus has a rich biblical history. Barnabas came from Cyprus. Um, Paul did his missionary journey on Cyprus. According to their history, um, um, what's his name? Lazarus, not, not Lazarus. Yes, Laz not, not Lazarus, I've forgotten the one. But someone else also became a bishop in, in Cyprus. So it has a strong biblical history. So that understanding is important. Um, of course, they're very rooted in Greek, um, Orthodox Church. So dates their liturgy in church, they use the old Greek, not modern Greek. Um, so that understanding is also important. Understanding their culture is also important. Now, one thing that I got to understand about Cyprus is that um, when you're getting married, it is rather the, the woman's family who pay for the wedding. And then they also must provide an accommodation where the man and the wife will stay. I said, oh God, I wish I knew this earlier. <laughs> so yeah, so all of that. And the mothers have a key influence in the home. Um, whereas in other cultures is the father, but in the Cypriot culture is the mother. So understand the culture of the people is important, then it helps to navigate the people very well. So that was one thing we started with. And then the second thing was identifying where the gaps are. Who has God really called us to reach out to? Um, understanding what churches already exist, what is God already doing in the land? Then after identifying what, or who God wants us to reach out to, 
Um, I was reflecting on this last part. The last part is really, I think over the past few years, three things we've been more committed to. First one, Paul said about the, Tessal no, the Macedonian church that they first gave themselves to the Lord and then to us. So if I look at what we're doing, firstly, it's about getting them to commit themselves to the Lord. And second thing is to commit themselves to the church. Sometimes you have people who are in the church, but they're not so committed to that family. They don't really belong. They just come and go. So how do we get them to commit themselves, not just to the Lord, but also to this community where the Lord has placed them in? Then the third thing as well is to get them to commit themselves to what the Lord is doing in the nation, what God wants to do in the nation, where they see themselves as responsible and part of it. So these three C's, commitment themselves to the Lord, to the community, and um, to also the nation, what God is in the nation. Those are the things that I think I would say we've been focusing on. Thank you. Thank you, Evangelist Service. Uh, we'll move on to Pastor Edwin, please. All right. Uh, praise the Lord. Um, I want to thank the Almighty God for giving me this opportunity. I want to uh, thank the Chairman for giving me this opportunity. Um, well, um, I have so much to say. I have very less time, so I'm, I'm just going to be uh, short. Uh, by the grace of God, when we, uh, when we, stationed, when we were stationed in London, uh, we were not in a hurry to plant a church. We took time to study uh, the place. Um, initially, we started our church service right at our home, just with me, myself, and my wife. And we started praying and started praying. And uh, we decided to go around, have a look at the uh, demographic uh, and on all the places that we were looking at to uh, plant a church. And uh, we were trying to even study. Um, you know, especially because I was stationed there to um, plant an Asian community church. Uh, so we were trying to look at uh, the right places where we can uh, successfully plant uh, uh, an Asian community church. Uh, one thing that we were uh, really mindful of uh, was that uh, um, I personally, I was ready to take risk. I was ready to make mistakes uh, because as you know, India uh, is, is one of the biggest subcontinents. We have, uh, uh, we have uh, close to uh, 19,000 languages and dialects. Uh, and so uh, we realized that um, focusing on one community would not uh, uh, make it easy for us. So what we try to do is we try to, uh, we try to make sure that uh, we have a common language that we use for our Sunday services. So um, um, month by month, we started looking at uh, the, you know, the people we want to target and uh, we started focusing on uh, you know, the communities that we want to reach out to. Uh, and by the grace of God, we were able to reach out to community. As a matter of fact, by the grace of God, we were also able to reach other nationals, uh, especially from Pakistan, from Sri Lanka, from China. Uh, and it, it, it's been amazing. Uh, where, just as I said earlier, we were ready to take risks. We were ready to make mistakes. We were ready to unlearn certain things that we had already learned so that we could put uh, or so that we can contextualize the gospel according, uh, according to the community that we are targeting. Uh, so it's been, it's been a great journey and we believe that we are going to possess nations. Uh, every sphere belongs to us and like, uh, like our chairman rightly said, uh, we are going to possess nations. We are going to transform our world. And so that's a little bit about what we've been doing in the nation of United Kingdom. Amen. God bless you. I think Pastor Matthews forgot to um, state that he was actually in COP India. And then he was transferred to the UK to start the Asian Community Church. So just a little bit of background so you know where he's coming from. Pastor Richard, please. Amen. Thank you very much. And just like my brothers have said, I'm grateful to our dear chairman and the planning team for my inclusion. Um, so we have actually done the very opposite of our dear brother, Pastor Edwin. So London, India to London, and in my case from the UK out to Singapore. Uh, Singapore is a megapolis um, out in the far east. And one of the unique things about Singapore is the fact that it has got a lot of diversity. <laughs> A lot of people from different parts of the world and I remember actually when we did our ethnographic research before going um, probably the IMD will testify that mine was probably the longest but if I was to do another one now it would probably be even longer because there's so much to learn and understand when you get on the ground and understand the context 
So um, in our first few months of, of learning, understanding, trying to engage people, engage different churches and church leaders and Christian communities. In fact, one of the first things we did was connect with the National Council of Churches. And we learned a lot. That meant we had to unlearn a lot. And in that unlearning, we realized that we needed to have a fresh expressions concept when it comes to church. Uh, I had to abort a lot of things that I've ever learned. And the fresh expressions meant that we needed to pursue bite-sized ministries. Um, and so by bite-sized ministries, you're, you were tackling groups individually, house helps, dormitory workers. Um, we work with Teen Challenge, so that is like rehabilitating drug addicts. Um, and we also found that although the nation has religious harmony and, you know, everyone is living in peace, people preferred to be in their groups when it came to worship. So um, in our pursuit of resourcing and finding people, we actually needed to enter the spaces and then make them comfortable to then integrate. So we adopted house prayer sessions where we built relationships from the inside out and, and things like that to really just get close to the people, what, what we would usually term as friendship evangelism, and then bring them in and make them comfortable amongst the others. Um, so this is some of the things that we've been doing. We, we have a fresh expressions approach. So um, I believe in marrying the vision but dating the model. So sometimes we can abort the model if it doesn't fit with the vision. Or if the vision, if it carries the vision for a moment but it isn't working anymore, quickly adopt another model so that the vision can carry on. Yeah, so those are some of the things that we, we, we've been doing out there. Amen, amen. Thank you so much. I've learned so much just by this one question alone. So I just wanted to reiterate certain things. So it's about studying and understanding your concepts, physical and spiritual mapping. Find out what institutions are there. Where is the enemy targeting? What can we do um, to enter those spaces, you know, to reach out to souls? Discipleship. Street church, engaging people and understanding where they're coming from. So we don't go out and just impose maybe what we've done before, but really listening to them, understanding how they're thinking, and then we can work the gospel into um, that context as well. Understanding the culture um, and the context of the land, identifying gaps. What is God already doing? And what can we then you know, come alongside to support in terms of areas that are lacking? And then also, first, commitment to the Lord and then commitment to the church. So I think that's also a key area. Having the ability to also be flexible in making mistakes and taking risks, I think that's also very important. And then also fresh expression. Sometimes we need to unlearn in order to learn. So I think that's a lot that we've learned. So thank you so much, our panelists, for that. I would like to move on and ask a question now about, I think you've probably mentioned it already in what you said, but maybe one key success that you think um, you know, has really come out of the approaches that you're using in your nation. So I'll start from Pastor John. One key success that you would say has really come out of the approaches and model that you're using to build um, City Church. Yes, thank you very much for the question. Um, I'd say the, for me the paramount success would be the fact that people have gotten to know Jesus. People that were once not really, didn't even feel welcome in the church or could not associate with the church have now kind of found um, a new sense of belonging in Christ and um, have fallen in love with Christ. And I see the transition from people coming in a bit, um, not, not necessarily knowing what to expect, and then getting themselves caught by the Holy Spirit and then being transformed and then coming back again to go out there and pull people in. And I think that's... That's just the, the biggest joy and the biggest thing that I have experienced myself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. Evangelist Kwame, please. Yes. So just as my brother has said, it's ex it excites me to see people come to Christ. Mm. And what is exciting, you know, in Luxembourg, it's to see Luxembourgish, you know, Luxembourgish person in the church coming to church. Mm and being active in the things of God and becoming leaders. You know, I'm so excited to see my brother Edwin here. When I started in India some 12 years ago, he was my interpreter. The Lord. 
Amen. Let's go. Using him, not only Edwin, but some other missionaries and other pastors. So I see leaders coming Amen. who are buying into the vision and they are taking the nation and the cities Amen. for Jesus Christ. Amen. I also see that we are taking the institutions by the grace of God. Amen. Um, God willing, we are meeting a very important person in Luxembourg, our dear chairman and our fathers. And we thank the Lord for that. Amen. All these are the, some of the things that I see God doing and it's exciting. I know that greater things are coming. Amen. 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 God bless you. Evangelist Elvis, please. Thank you very much. Um, reflecting on it, I think seeing people grow is important as well. Um, coming to a point where you're seeing the people expressing their hunger for the Lord and reaching out. But I would also want to say one of the biggest things the Lord has done reflecting back is given us opportunity um, to be involved in certain conversations um, with the Speaker of Parliament and also the Mayor. Um, because I remember um, Cyprus is a country that is very orthodox. And so everything non-orthodox is regarded as heretic and is not actually Christian. Um, so the Christians do get persecuted, especially the local indigenous Christians. Um, and when we were invited to join the mayor and the speaker of parliament, the secretary of the Evangelical Alliance met me and asked, how did they respond to you? Um, were they okay with you in that meeting? How did you end up there? And I realized that actually God's grace is helping us. Amen. So that is, I think, a significant Amen. thing. Bless you. Thank you so much. Pastor Matthews, please. Right. Um, in our case, um, it was always uh, personal mentoring. Mm. Um, we, we see that, you know, especially in, in, the, in the Asian community, um, some of them don't even know Jesus. And uh, it's, it's um, you know, so it's paramount that we spend some time, quality time, personal time with them to teach them about Jesus. So, um, uh, so that they would understand. Uh, and so we take our Bible studies very seriously. And uh, we make sure that we start from the fundamentals. Uh, we build the foundation so that, you know, when they grow, when they grow, the, you know, storms cannot make them fall. Uh, so one uh, success that I would point out at is that we make sure that we have personal mentoring sessions. Mm. It is definitely uh, very time consuming, uh, but once uh, you know, we have built the foundation, we see great results uh, in, in the life of people. And, and what we do after the, right after that is when, when we see their lives being transformed, they go into their communities and bring their brothers, their sisters uh, to, uh, to the church. And we repeat this entire cycle once again. And so uh, we've, seen a great, uh, uh, we've seen great results uh, when we spend personal time, uh, personal mentoring time uh, with the people. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Pastor Richard. Thank you. Um, I think mine will be quite a basic one. Um, seeing members own the church, that has been probably our biggest win. Mm. Uh, seeing people come in and do the basics, you know, clean the church, arrange the chairs, and see it as their church, mm. you know, because not long ago, a lot of these guys um, knew nothing about the Church of Pentecost, knew nothing about what we represent, and um, especially because as a as the pastor, I'm also the minority in terms of race in the, in the congregation. Um, it, is, it is amazing to see those, those things happen. Yeah. So owning the church is the biggest win for, for amen. us. Amen, amen, amen. I believe we're, le we're learning a lot, right, from this uh, panel discussion. Okay, so moving on because of my time, I want to make sure I can get our audience's questions in as well. Um, can you possibly point out maybe one challenge? Maybe a challenge that either you've overcome or you've seen, which you're still thinking about. Um, and just tell us a little bit about, yes, what, if you've overcome it, what practically, how did you solve it? What did you do? Um, and if it's still in the pipeline to overcome, what are you thinking of doing? Yeah, so I've left it open for you. So a challenge, what, you, what you've done or what you're about to do, again, it's just for us to learn. If we, you know, get into any kind of fix or challenge, what can we do? So what, what's the Holy Spirit telling you? 
Pastor John, yes, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, so for, for us, I think all the city church members here can testify that our biggest challenge is location. Um, if you go to the city, it's very expensive. Um, and even sometimes finding a location for church is very, very difficult. Um, I must say the last uh, month when we opened the last city church, Altmar City Church, we actually were at the verge of signing with four locations. And uh, just every time that we were just about to sign, it was, uh, it was, it was they called us off. The moment they find out um, your church, uh, then they just call you off. Um, and the last one, by God's grace, through relationship, we managed to partner with the cinema chain called View. Um, we are looking to build our relations on that. So now, gradually, we have two locations in their cinema. So what is happening is um, they take out their films and then we come and do church. That's something you want to clap for Jesus on. <laughs> they take out the films and we, we get to do church in there. And it's just amazing. Um, we have services in the hospital, in the, one of the major uh, hospitals in Amsterdam on a weekly basis. But yet still, um, our members, you can see, as zealous as they are, they are really feeling the physical weight. Because every given Sunday, we need to set up a place like this. And break it down and pack it back into a bus um, so we are really praying and we solicit your prayer uh, and, and financial support if you will <laughs> um, yeah to find places in the middle of the city uh, to to serve our God and to get people coming in amen 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 just just to just to to dwell there a little bit pastor John. Um, so you've mentioned, obviously, the fact that a location can be a challenge and it's expensive. What, uh, what are some of the things you're doing to help in terms of raising finances? You know, because maybe there may be leaders here who are also looking for a location and they have a finance challenge. What are some of the things you're doing to help you in that respect? Yes, please. Thank you very much. So one of the major, major strategies that we use is we teach. So um, most of our members are uh, basically new Christians, uh, majority of, especially when we started the city church, the first year, how about city churches? 90% of the members gave their lives to Christ. So the 300 people, probably like 270 gave their lives to Christ uh, in the church. So then you need to really teach them gradually. And what we are now engaging them into is we are teaching them the power of giving and the power of tithing. And um, glory be to God, they are understanding. Amen. Amen. And they will continue to understand them more. You need Amen. to shout over there. <laughs> Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Evangelist Kwame, please. Okay, thank you very much. So our greatest challenge is that um, you meet 10 people, nine are not from Luxembourg. Mm. So one, we have done the analysis. So I always say if we would be in a place with let's say two, three, four, five, six million, and you have the people living there, you're probably going to have a church made up of 2,000 or so members. So we are after the one person who lives there. We are, and then the rest, we need to come up with a ministry for them. Cross-border ministry. It's something that must be introduced. Amen. So I think we will work on it, and we will pray that God will make, you know. They come from Holland, Germany, France, and Belgium. Mm. Yes, yeah, so we will see. Amen. Thank you. Amen. The Lord will grant grace. Amen. 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 Evangelist Nagel, please. Thank you once again. Um, so in terms of committing themselves to the Lord, we can have discipleship structures. But it's how they can give themselves to us and the church. That was the area that we found a challenge. Because Cyprus is such that um, even the young people of the nation don't stay in the country. Because it's too small, there are little, limited opportunities, so they want to go to UK and other places. So how do we build a community where the people are also committed um, to the community? And once they're committed, it's easier for the money to also be committed and all of that. Um, what we started looking at was to do, uh, we took the new members handbook that was developed by HQ and we modified it um, to suit us. We added a module on um, the Cyprus church, the history of it, and the vision of the church in there as well. Um, and then every new person who joins the church, we put them into cohorts. Um, 
groups of the cohorts, there will be maybe about 10 to 15 of them. Then they will have a six weeks new members class. Because one of the concerns we had from people was that when they come to the church, they enjoy the service, but they've noticed that people already have their friends and groups. So after service, they seem to be on their own. So they don't feel like they belong. So with that, the new members class, the six weeks class, by the time you're done with the six weeks class, you've now formed a group of friends within the church. You know each other better. And then also by the end of six weeks class, we also know you a bit better and we can plug you into an area to serve. So that's one thing we started with to try and address that problem. Then the other thing was to, we, reached, we started that this year. We started what we call a workers meeting. Um, so church service starts at 10 o'clock, um, but we've decided that everyone who works in the church has anything to do in service and out of service must be in church an hour before service. Uh, you must be in church an hour before service um, and they agreed amongst themselves that if you turn up late and you don't communicate, you pay a five euro fine. They agreed among themselves. And the, and the fine is not for coming late, it's for not communicating. Um, and one of them is the one responsible for that. So they come normally by nine o'clock, you've got close to 40 people in church. And what we do is that we have a team meeting. So we review the previous Sunday service, discuss what went well, what didn't go well, what needs to be improved. And everyone knows that if your team doesn't work well, it will be picked up in the team meeting. So we're continuously trying to improve. Then after that, we discuss what we're going to do in that service. Um, and then if someone is not in, we plug someone in to adjust quickly. We make the changes quickly. Then we pray together as workers um, for about 15 minutes. Um, and then we start the service. And some of the feedback I've had is they feel like they're planning the service with us. They feel like they, it is them leading the service and owning the service. So that sense of responsibility and our service and commitment, I'm seeing more. And those are some of the things we're doing. We only started the team meetings in February, so I'm still assessing it. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Pastor Matthias, please. Right. So... Um one of the uh, challenges that we face is that we often, uh, we make sure as a church, we always go out for evangelism to the streets. So we have some specific spots where we make sure every week we go out there, sing some songs, um, uh, preach the gospel. Um, so oftentimes what we see is that there is a lot of resistance um, from other religious groups um, in that community. And so they start feeling a little um, insecure. Uh, and so a lot of times we have seen that, you know, they call on the police and, you know, um, there, there were times when I could, you know, easily be arrested and by the grace of God, somebody walked in and, 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 and you know, said, said some things and defended us. So one of the challenges that uh, we experience in our ministry in the UK is that uh, sometimes we don't, uh, we don't have the freedom to go and preach out the gospel. Sometimes we are, um, you know, sometimes we are stopped. Uh, by the officials um, and the second one is is, is uh, it's not a challenge but something to encourage everybody uh, sometimes we we want to see results really fast uh, sometimes we want to sow a seed and we want uh, we want uh, the seed to grow immediately um, but uh, what I want to encourage all of us uh, with is that um, you know we, we, we need to continue to sow the seed um, and especially when you come to Asian community uh, the entire process of them accept, accepting Jesus Christ is a very slow process. It's not that quick. Um, so uh, we need to take our time. We need to take our time. Continue to sow the seed. Um, continue to sow the seed. Somebody else will water it and the Lord will bring an increase. Uh, so I think as, as a church, uh, we, we must continue to do uh, what we've been asked to do. And the increase will certainly come from the Lord. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you. Amen. I'll challenge. be as swift as possible. Um, I've got two. The first one is financial, um, which I'm sure you expected. Singapore is uh, still reigning as the most expensive country in the world. Um, so you have a lot of high cost on very basic things. And so how we're trying to overcome that challenge is bringing our few members along um, on investing in task-based missions and ministries. So 
uh, they get a chance to invest in like our bread distribution ministry or in our teen challenge ministry um, and we are praying and teaching them so that that kind of expands into full-on sacrificial giving mm -hmm. you know one of our biggest wins was last year um, starting McEwen's missions offering you know that was a very big win for us that people start giving the McKeown and then they start giving month to month on mission offering as well so that is the first one the second one is um, black history is not very credible in, in Singapore um, in that some of our black brothers haven't shown themselves very well in the past so there's very little trust um, for, for our kind and so um, sometimes that can prove a challenge you know people come in they like the administration they like everything but there's a tinge of questioning when it's black led you know so um, of course we are trying to avoid tokenism but we are building people um, you know who are Chinese um, people who are Tamil um, at the moment strategically so that they could front up ministry and uh, it's not seen as just this black person thing mm -hmm. um, so that is one of the challenges that we have and we are slowly trying to um, overcome that challenge by training um, our people our indigenous people to really front the church so yeah. that, that will be it thank you thank you that's very interesting so I think we can see from everything that our ministers have said their, their challenges are very 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 different and then they will, you know, as they pray, I believe the Holy Spirit grants them the grace in order to know what to do next. So it means what they are facing may not necessarily be what you're facing, but I believe from what they've said, you'll be able to glean some insights that would also help you in your situation. Now, moving on, I would like us to talk about innovation. If we're talking about building tomorrow's church today, then I believe we need to look at um, I believe one of you mentioned you need to look at your context, what's happening, what's going on, and how can we modify ourselves so that we're not necessarily, you know, downwatering our faith or our doctrines, but then we're being, um, what's the word? We're being, um, we're, like, we're, we're looking at society and seeing what society needs and be able to fit that need as a church so that then we can win more people in. So let's talk about innovation. For Pastor John, I have a specific question for you. Um, so I've learned recently, I've seen, um, you know, some things about starting like a creative film sort of, oh, yeah. yeah, that I believe, you know, so that, can you tell us a little bit about that kind of project and what kind of influence or impact you're expecting it to have, you know? Thank you, yeah. So, so there, there are a few things that um, we are working on now. Um, I believe Vision 2028, as we've all probably read, um, it gives avenue to creating new ministries in the church. So the church is not limited to the traditional ministry that we have, but you identify where there is a potential need to be met, and then you, you find a strategy or you, you devise means to uh, address the, the, the issue. Everybody, or majority of, the, of our generation or the younger generation watches Netflix. Who watches Netflix here? Yeah? Who watches Iroko? Or Nollywood? Bollywood? Yes. <laughs> so movies, movies are, I mean, over the, over the uh, years have been a, a very strong means um, that the world has used to, to send out a message. Um, uh, but the gates of hell shall not prevail. Um, so what we are doing now is we are trying to come up with a movie series, um, but they're not, not a, a normal youth type of movie series, but really on a very high and quality level. Um, we are considering two things, whether to push to have a very strong movie or series um, that is called The Faith and it's being directed by our youngest elder, Stanley Fletcher. He's 19 years old. 19 years old, he's somewhere there. And uh, he's the one presiding Nijmegen City Church at the moment, 19 years. And he happened to be a former rapper. So he's a very famous rapper in the Netherlands. Yes, yes. Please make sure you come on Friday. Friday, you, you'll be amazed. Um, and he